Next, please. Hi, I'm Stu Trivax. You know the music that goes with a scary movie? I've been a fan of yours since I was a kid. <laughs> One, two, three. I can't stop my leg. I can't stop my leg. I can't stop my leg. Thank you. I could also work with a puppet. No, thank you. So this guy says to me in Jewish, hop the 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 hop Thank you. Hi, Bobby. So I go to the scary movie. Ooh. Dead ringer for me. He's just not right. I'm gonna play the part myself. It's kind of risky, Robert. Robert, you're awful close to the part. Yeah, I'm close to the part, but no one knows Robert Klein like I know Robert Klein. When you come to think about it, I am Robert Klein. It's a good point, Robert. Right, I hadn't even thought of that. An excellent point. So it's settled then. Robert Klein will play the part of Robert Klein on Broadway and Robert Klein on Broadway. Ladies and gen... Ladies and... You know what he said to me? He been to those horror movies. Ooh, Line. Thank you. That curtain will be just right. I'm rehearsing, Mr. Klein. From the right. Thank you. Good evening. Right. Keep rehearsing those tickets, George. I will, Miss Klein. I argue in the center. Oh, uh, you two in the center, thank you. It's, it's these two seats right here. Oh, Mr. Klein, I can't wait for opening night. Me neither. It's these two seats right here. Fifteen minutes, Mr. Klein. Thank you, Jimmy. Break a leg. Ah. Don't say break your leg anymore, Jimmy. Ah. Ah. Second aisle over, please. Good evening. First aisle over, please. Thank you. First aisle over, please. Thank you. Good evening. Oh, uh, two. Right this yes, way, please. This aisle, please. Good evening. Hi. The center aisle, please. Thank you. Look. Oh, my God. Good and plenty. $94 Broadway. You remember when licorice was two for a nickel? 75 80 Do you have 40 bucks? We could split a Hershey bar. Places, Mr. Klein. Thank you, Jimmy. Mm. Gentlemen, Robert Klein.
Thank you. Thank you very much. We're on Broadway. Should get bothered by people outside. Amazing Grace, give me a dollar, I'll follow you home. You know. You got some for veterans? You know, there's a lot of people outside that are very busy tonight. New York is so exciting. We always, of course, have people from other lands visiting, and no one understands English. And people, when someone doesn't understand, they think speaking louder will help. You know what I mean? It's a Chinese man on 43rd Street trying to get the right bus. Everyone's been great to him so far. Came in from Kennedy, cabbie charged him $600. <laughs> You go on bus, you go, you go we on bussy, you go bus. And the guy is going in Chinese, schmuck, I hear you. I don't understand you. There's a qualitative difference, you know. In Chinese, he's saying, I mean, I don't know the language, but I, you know, I'm colloquial. Why is my hand busy like that? After this, we're all gonna go out to one of those all night delicatessens and have a sandwich made by a very hostile West Indian. You know, so my, one of my favorite places. You want lettuce, man? You want pickle too, eh? Man? You want me to eat it for you too, eh? No, only one plastic fork. Have a good day. You know, it's. A... I know what it's like to be on the outs. Spent some time in Europe. First time I was ever in Paris, lost on the subway. It's embarrassing, and people were not nice. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, je suis American. Why did I take Spanish? Excuse me, and I'm, I'm lost. I'm American. <laughs> I eventually got so frustrated, I embarrassed myself, you know. And I went, could you please, I said, have you ever a thing called D-Day putts? You know, I lost control, I mean, you know. My uncle fought in that war, remember? WW2, I mean, I just. Maurice Chevalier sang for Hitler, how's that? You know? invented Deutschland, Deutschland, Uber. Everybody has their past here. Um, <laughs> incidentally, half the proceeds in the show are going to the Kurt Waldheim Fund. <laughs> what happened is, poor Kurt, we forgot four years of his life. Sending him to the Harry Lorraine Memory Institute. <laughs> where you say, Nazi, normal, nan, nan, I can remember now. You know, it's amazing. <laughs> what happened was, he saw this story that was 1941. Uh, you know, I was in Vienna. I was eating Schlager with cafe, 1941, and suddenly 1946. <laughs> See, people missed the point. They said, leave him alone. You know, what are you going to do? Guy in Long Island spent the war going, that's what a statement! You know, nah, leave him alone. I mean, it's not punishment to get him. And so the rest of generations to come won't think World War II was Hogan's Heroes <laughs> on television, where the Nazis were cute as little toys, you know. Ho, ho, you Americans. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> oh, Hogan, do you have a radio? Are you hiding? No, it's just me going beep, beep. Oh, okay, you Americans. <laughs> what do you want for Christmas? <laughs> this is uh, real. I mean, you folks watching at home, this will, uh, after it shows on the HBO, after it then becomes a home video, the last one a couple of years ago, it was a big seller. 
I mean, I mean, people certainly loved it, Child of the 50s, man. The A's, they told me in the street all the time, and I, Robert, I love that video. Taped it off my friend. <laughs> And I wouldn't do it, but I mean, you know, it's a federal crime, eh? I mean, it is. The man is admitting a federal crime. Talk about complacency, you know, it's a crime. A crime uh, approximately equal in severity to tearing the tag off your mattress. <laughs> Throwing carpet sweepings into your incinerator, you know, <laughs> spitting on the subway. Everything that's signed on incinerator, they always hyperbolize the sentences. Everything is exaggerated, you know. Throwing carpet sweepings into this incinerator, punishable by up to a hundred years in prison, you know. <laughs> Did a judge ever get that pissed off? That he, you know, some guy, a poor guy, is in Attica and he says, What are you in for? Murder one? What are you in for? Tore the tag off my mattress. <laughs> I didn't go, <laughs> and I do it again. <laughs> uh, they, there's a lot of crime. I think, uh, you know why? Because there's an amoral table set. Cheating is allowed. Ted Turner on his network, he advertises illegal golf balls. You ever see that one? Your friends will never know, not for tournament play. And disclaimer, disclaimer, bullshit motion. <laughs> Got to be an Evelyn Wood graduate to read this, you know. <laughs> Imagine, War and Peace, five minutes. These students are actually studying. Have you ever seen them? This week at the holiday, you know, five minutes. We're even in Hebrew. <laughs> Chinese, you know. Arabic, every possible language. Evelyn Wood's speed reading dynamics can make... I mean, I want to read everything that ever was written to, but... Can you get every nuance of a novel that way, every and and or and but that an author intended? Uh, I've written a few small things in magazines. I wrote a screenplay. That's forever. An author could stay up all night wondering, should it be an and and or? <laughs> the and is grammatically correct, but the or is ever so much more rhythmic. You're coming around that Evelyn Wood paragraph at 60 miles an hour. Of me, an and or an or has no meaning because. <laughs> but the essence of that message is should get this golf ball, your friends will never know, to, advising you, encouraging you to cheat even at a friendly game on your friends. You know, because it's just an ordinary little golf ball with a 3,500 pound thrust Garrett turbofan engine in it. <laughs> He also have it as hunters rub this on your hunting boots and the deer can't resist it. I mean, is that pathetic? Kill me, kill me first. No, not him. Kill me first, please. Kill me. Yeah. You know, they quarter themselves, jump on your fender, wash the blood off before they die. I mean, it's so hunter convenient. I'm not being a hypocrite. I I eat meat sometimes, and it's not exactly a sporting run around in the slaughterhouse. You know what I mean? Come on, Tally Ho, Bill, at the, at the Oscar Mayer plant, believe me. Ah, let him run around one more time, then we'll slit his throat and hang him by his feet. <laughs> but after all, already, the man, in this case meaning humanity, please, the person hunting, already has a decided advantage. You have a howitzer going for you, all right? And the deer is known for the danger it represents to me. You know, those things will take you home right off. Um, you have a scope on it that makes him look an inch away when he's in Yonkers. <laughs> he has the mind of a deer, very great defense mechanism. When there's danger, they stand still. How's that? <laughs> you have the mind of a human being backed by hundreds, even thousands of years, wealth, Western culture and thinking, a civilization which has come up with concepts like WrestleMania. <laughs> if that Puerto Rican steps in the ring on May 24th in Madison Square Garden, he'll see who's better, Iranians or Russians, you know. <laughs> Thank you.
I think that uh, the idea behind that, which is so interesting to me, is the cheating aspect. For example, fishing, a little bit of a challenge. I have done it a little. And Alex Karras, who I once did a picture with, funny guy, took me fishing uh, off uh, uh, Florida. So, I mean, he doesn't like the kind of fishing you have to wait too much. He gets invited every year to a millionaire's ranch in Texas. He has about 4,000 trout in a 12-foot square tank. <laughs> Alex likes to be busy when he's fishing. No, no I, um, I caught a 35-pound albacore tuna off of Montauk once. It took me an hour to land it. I felt like Ernest Hemingway's grandson. You know, who needs this? I don't have to prove any macho stuff. Come on, you little fruit, are you a man? Leave me alone with this. It's a beautiful fish I brought him. I couldn't believe a tuna fish was even a fish. Do you reel up the mayonnaise and the, and the celery? <laughs> Well, tuna fish is in a can when it comes right up there with a price on it, you know. So if I stopped eating it, I, that's, that's why I stopped my subscription to Consumer Reports. You ever read that? The docket? I don't want to know about the amount, the acceptable amount of rodent hair in wholesale tuna fish. <laughs> so, I'm a very weird guy. I have no acceptable amount for me of rodent hair in tuna fish. You know what I mean? Some people are three, four hundred hairs, you know, in a can. <laughs> Some people seven or eight. I don't like rodent hairs even, you know, two is too many for me. I'm crazy. <laughs> That's in peanut butter too, except for Skippy. Because Annette Funicello is... <sighs> in more innocent times, I used to watch her and I, I adored her breasts. The, little perk-ups, I'm not, you know, it's just the sweater, and she was so assertive, I'm a gnat, you know, she knew who she was, and <laughs> and, and I didn't even notice that she was a mutation with rodent ears, I, that, I accepted these imperfections. <laughs> now she does that peanut butter commercial, which is like she's play a housewife, uh, if that term is still valid, I guess it is in the advertising agencies. And everyone knows peanut butter has a lot of protein. It's interesting here. It's called the devil's advocate kind of commercial. She talks about how much protein a Skippy Lunch has, and these other actresses playing with baby carriages. And all, they become devil's advocates as housewives to suggest to Annette, wait a minute, what other lunches might have more protein than a Skippy peanut butter lunch? <laughs> because the company wishes to load it in its favor, the guesses they make are positively demented. You know, no adult could believe it. How about a bologna sandwich, Miss Funicello, with Kool-Aid? <laughs> Skippy has more, that's amazing. I, I... <laughs> How about that luncheon meat with the enormous specks of white fat in the middle there with the pepper pieces that get caught in here? Do they red plastic casing that has no relationship to anything organic. <laughs> Skippy has more, it's incredible. <laughs> How about a dog shit souffle? I've got you there. Skippy, <laughs> I can't believe it. How about anthracite coal with an asphalt omelet? You know, I mean, forget that. Dick Clark, I always associate him. He's very patient. He's a pretty nice guy. He's looks unbelievable. You know, he has people from American Bandstand that were teenagers that used to dance on that show. They come to visit him. They go, hello, Dick. <laughs> Justine Macarelli, remember? I used to do the Lindy with Tony Macucci, remember? <laughs> do the Chalipso like we did. Remember that? I don't know, he goes, sure I do. <laughs> Security, you know. Um, <laughs> he looks fantastic. Unbelievable. The ages of, I mean, you know how long he's been in business? You know what the first hit song he ever tested for the, they rated for beat and lyrics? Dig this one. This is a, you know, way back. <laughs> Oh, 
you know, which was a hit in 1114 for a while. He gave it a six in the lyrics, which is unfair. He doesn't understand Latin. Leave it to people to do, you know. I'll do another Gregorian chant. Well, I'll do it. Actually, it's an excellent Gregorian chant. They're very restful. If you know it, please come in. Um, this is from the 12th century, which is 1100. Isn't that confusing? It took me so long to learn that. In the 12th century, you count back 100. It's like, it's California three months ahead or hours or, you know. You... This was used to call the friars to the evening meal in a French monastery. So beautiful. So beautiful. They don't write them like that anymore. It's a mystical experience of wonder. People are looking for their religion everywhere. I mean, every channel has every, you know, can they all be right? Every evangelist or everybody has their own thing. I saw Jimmy Swaggart the other day, who... No, but you know what he was doing? Jimmy's all right. Actually, my favorite thing about Jimmy is he's Jerry Lee Lewis's cousin. Now, that's heavy. Jimmy himself has no talent. So Jerry did marry a young woman, an embryo he married. In... Um, it's one of my favorites here. I think she was actually four. And it, it... I think in Georgia you have to be an embryo to drive, but you have to be free to get married. Somebody. <laughs> so anyway, um, no, I love, I have in-laws, and I love Georgia very much. They talk in questions though. Last week went to see my mother-in-law. You know, you're talking to me, and you know, you're asking me if you went to see your mother. And then we went to the Braves game. Well, I, I, I don't know. Did you go <laughs> with your mother-in-law? And then we went home to see Stone Mountain, you know. <laughs> no. It... That's why they lost the Civil War. The troops couldn't understand the commands. They were very equivocal, you know. Charge. <laughs> the Northern troops were drunk and had VD, cranky, but they knew which direction to fuck. Get me! <laughs> anyway, Swaggart was decrying modern art. Uh, well, that's a little out of his field. You know, the Russians do that. The Chinese do that. The Nazis did it. Anything that isn't representational, a picture of a cow or a horse or a woman, if it's a line or a feeling of texture, work with the devil! You know, who was this guy going along? We used to have art. And now we have lines and scratches and marks and squares and circles in the work of the devil. He's talking to a bunch of connoisseurs here, you know. <laughs> he himself, I'm sure, art is of color in that number 17 a little more. That's a green, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Atlantic City, one of those black velvet things with a silver tiger. You know, real good taste. <laughs> Clowns with tears on their cheeks. Anyway. Around 72, I don't remember when, somebody gave me two tickets, hot tickets to see the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, who was a pretty sweet little guy. The, the Beatles once mentioned him, he became a multi-millionaire, you know. And he had this thing in Madison Square Garden, perfect place to have a religious experience. Um, cheap seats way up there, this tiny little guy is a bed of white roses. From up there, it looks like a little raisin on a marshmallow. You know? Nice religious sound to it. Transcendental meditation. Is the only way to be even. Hey, Maharishi Buttons here. Hey, get your Maharishi Buttons here. Hey, Maharishi Pendens. Hey, take one home. Hey, Maharishi Pendens. Hey, hey, I saw a gear shaped like the Maharishi. You know, it's a. To me, I, I must say, maybe in the ritual sense, I'm not, I, I really, uh, you know, do not go regularly to services. Or but to me, it's simple. Mysticism, religious experience. One day, years ago, forgot and worked on Yom Kippur, the Jewish high holiday. Next morning, I had a tremendous pus wart right under my eye. <laughs> I mean, that tells you right there, that's it, over. Hmm.
I was saying about crime and cheating and people's attitude. Although partly, you know, a lot of people don't realize we lock people up, heavier sentences in the Western world. Don't think people aren't going to jail. It's a disparity of punishment for things that don't count or things that do. 50 states, or you smoke a joint in Texas, consecutive life sentences, no chance of parole or visitors. <laughs> Commit murder in Rhode Island, you can't watch TV three nights. <laughs> I have a way, the, uh, the jails are so full there. Uh, I have a suggestion, but first there's an interesting one in Florida, you see that? People serve prison time at home, have to stay in the house 12 hours a day. They have a radioactive bracelet on their leg. They try to walk out at the wrong hour. This man is a fugitive, this man is a fugitive. Call the police, call the police. <laughs> It's a general morality thing. I, I was at a urinal at TWA. It's important to the story. I'm usually not vulgar, but I do pee. So, you know, let's... And it happens to be a time that I'm spending by myself. I, it, it's creative sometimes. It's 20 seconds and boom, and, you know, uh, idle time. I, I frankly, I feel a little silly about it, but uh, occasionally if there's a cigarette butt in the urinal, I will aim for it and pretend it's a Nazi installation. <laughs> I'm afraid the photos from Bitburg were poor, sir. We're going to have to hit it again. <laughs> All right, go to it. You know, just try to separate the filter. Anyway. <laughs> Please forgive me. Uh, guy comes up along the urinal and he goes, and he goes hey man, you want to buy a watch? Like this. You know, I mean, first of all, the sleaze, I don't know about a watch in a men's room at TWA in Los Angeles. And I'm furious at him. What is it, stolen? He goes, what makes you think that, man? <laughs> nice step. He thought he was in West Side Story, this guy. He was like, da 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 da. Do you want a watch? <laughs> Do you want a watch? Do you want a watch? With a watch, you're never, never, never gonna be late. With a watch, with a watch, you'll keep that day, daddy oh, daddy oh, daddy oh. What do you think? I said, I think you're the most talented man I've ever seen at a urinal. <laughs> He's very honest with you. Have you seen the William Morris Agency? Ten percent of my money just applauded. Anyway. <laughs> no, more than ten percent of my money on that. Anyway. Guy has the nerve to ask me what makes me think it's stolen. You know, I don't know. I think a men's room seemed an odd venue for selling a watch. <laughs> what are you, the R.H. Macy men's room men's jewelry extension? I mean, I... Uh, Thing. No, I get the same feeling of security from him that I get buying my cutlery on the West Side Highway during a red light. You know. <laughs> no, I'm just driving home. I had no idea. Of, it's a shopping suit. But a washing machine can put it right in the trunk. Yeah. I, I ride in a lot of planes, and they do pretty well. American is one of the better ones, but they got fined a million and a half. Now, that's a heavy fine, and they paid it fair and square. They dropped an engine on a three-engine plane, landed safely in L.A. from Tucson, never even stopped, skipped the beat. Anyway, they had a leaky lavatory, and the crews kept on reporting on the squawk list. Leaky lavatory, you, know, you can fly with a toilet, no worry. One day, at 60... Uh, below f uh, Fahrenheit, up at 37,000 feet, it's cold. It was a crack in the side of the plane from this. And outside the plane, behind the engine, by the lavatory door, formed this tremendous chunk of frozen urine. <laughs> a Pittsburgh, if you will. <laughs> and it broke off, bingo, hit the engine. <laughs> Not Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Although I had a kielbasa sausage in the Pittsburgh airport, there's going to be a lawsuit over. 
Uh, you know those signs that say, please be patient. Good food takes time to prepare in a fine restaurant. You know, this one, please be patient. Allow the full 11 seconds for the microwave oven to cook this kielbasa and to assure that you and all future generations will be mutations for 160 years. If that thing can cook that thing in 11 seconds, I don't want it in my house. Although after the Chernobyl accident, I, knew, I was assured, the Russians showed Ukrainian dancers the next day, right near the plant. Full costume. <laughs> Didn't see these submachine guns just out of range. Keep dancing! It's hard to get union dancers for that particular shoot. <laughs> Cut! Out of here! Into the armored personnel, Gary. They tried to choreograph it in those asbestos suits, but they... Actually, we were very sentimental about it. That night, the, the most important guest on Ted, guest, that night, the most important guest on Ted Koppel's uh, late night was a commodities broker who said, well, those sons of bitches are gonna need wheat that don't glow, and we got it, you know. So. <laughs> we have the greatest setup here in the world, come on. We are, we purport to be very patriotic, but uh, we somehow huckster our national heritage. I don't want to bore you with lectures. You know, it turns out George Washington, especially for his time and his task, was a great man. He was tall and imposing and brave and the right man at the right time and risked would have been hung and we lost the revolution. He's in truth the father of our country. And I'm sure he'd be very, very, thrilled to know that we sacredly observe his birthday each year with a mattress sale. <laughs> Used car dealers. I'm Bill Duncan from Bill Duncan Dodge and I got vans for $9,999. Right, George? And this poor actor gets 90 bucks with a bad wig and a hatchet. That's right, Bill. I'm chopping down those prices. <laughs> A veritable cherry tree of savings. Leave me alone. No, we're very sensitive about our national heritage, you know. We, um... The American Civil War. A conflagration of untold proportions. Brother against brother, American against American, the bloodiest conflagration ever fought on our own soil. And capture it all in this Civil War chess set. <laughs> yes, the Franklin Mint will send you on your approval. Once every four months, each of these chess pieces at 37.50 a pop. You get the whole set to complete. You can play a nice game of chess with your friends in the year 2034. <laughs> I like the way they say, on your approval. You know, you may not want all the pawns. They're annoying. They get in the way, you know. Now, just one knight and one bishop for each. I, you know, on your approval. And this limited edition, uh, only two billion copies of this practice. There are certain areas of the world too soft to market, like the Sri Lanka area. They can't penetrate it with the Civil War chess set. The elective spending, you know, gone for things like rice, you know. And, so, uh, but they'll get there eventually, believe me. And I say, look at the detail and compassion on General Lee's face. This is one of the kings. General Lee, you look at this. This was, uh, you know, uh, molten lead 10 days ago. <laughs> General Lee could be Peggy Lee. <laughs> Pinky Lee. Trig V Lee, remember him? You have no idea who this is unless they tell you, much less compassionate. <laughs> it could be doing anything. There was there's a wonderful example, which no one cares about. I never hear, I never heard him, the, the laureates for him for this, in government service. The first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong, did not huckster his position, did not take this gross advantage. A guy like Michael Devers, the president's best friend, leaves government service. Hey, Korea, Canada, come on. <laughs> That's what it is. You know, I mean, it's the worst. There's no excuse, you know. Um, Neil Armstrong, do you realize that's the commercial gambit of the century? First man on the moon, remember? And yet he, he landed on the moon, remember his first words, incredibly touching. I was so embarrassed, bad reception. 
They get to the goddamn moon, you can't hear them. Embarrassing. They must have used Sprint. You know, I mean, that's... <laughs> Don't pay AT&T twice. Well, you know, that AT&T is too expensive. Why bother to hear the person you're calling? <laughs> luxury without that luxury, 50% off. Hello. Ah, but, what? Hey, what? This is not an authorized code. Your number is incorrect. Hello, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania! You know, <laughs> He did say a small step for man, a giant step for mankind. It is still admitted in our imaginations, although it happened, believe it or not, in 1969, 60s, 60s, 80s. But it still is the farthest out of our imagination that we've penetrated the mysterious and one of our great achievements collectively. I had a great deal to do with it myself, you know. <laughs> but you know, do you realize what that means, first man on the moon? He could have set himself up for 50 lifetimes if he were a Michael Deaver. Or could have put his foot on the moon and go, Coca-Cola! <laughs> what were the first words in the moon? Coca-Cola, trivia 200 years from now. What are they gonna do, call him back? All right, Neil, get that vehicle back here. That's unauthorized and we're pissed off. <laughs> He's got him by the Monongahelas. He's on the moon, costs billions, you know. IBM, be right with you, Saul, you know. He didn't, which reminds me of a crumb bum in our past who did, Agnew. Remember this bum? I was reading the other day, I remember, that it was evidently, while he was already in the White House, he took some bribes, like a $1,500 payment for some highway deal. I mean, don't get me wrong, but in my eyes, it, he almost would seem like less of a crumb bum if he took more. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is his idea. Well, I'm vice president now, $1,500. <laughs> Put his foot at the moon and he'd sell out much more cheaply, you know. Sam's Taylor Shop, Baltimore. <laughs> Vinny's Crab Cake Emporium. We deliver. I mean, you know, this is... <laughs> that time, I remember the 3M company, and when they gave an illegal bribe to Nixon, got a $3,000 fine. I think it was a felony, didn't it? They'll never do that again after that kind of thing. <laughs> I slept at board meeting. They went crazy. <laughs> Three thousand dollars. How are we going to come up with that kind of money? <laughs> Any ideas, genius board members? We can have a bazaar, sir. <laughs> I wish I looked my best. I put, you know what? Since the baseball season, I lost control. You know, you know that this bud's for you. I take that very seriously. <laughs> I do think each one is for me, and those Yanks keep hitting those who Anyway, I, but he, the point is that I, it sneaked up on me just a little. Like, I, you don't want to admit that your clothes are vaguely uncomfortable. You know, hi, Bill. You know, I can't. <laughs> I couldn't understand, like, simple tasks, like tying my shoes caused internal bleeding. I, I, you know. <laughs> Truth is, you keep on trying to squeeze the old, the new 37 frame into the old 33 low boy briefs and the genitalia squirts right up to the eyeball. <laughs> You're one of those singers in the opera, they own castrati. <laughs> Actually, no more. The guy, any guys that do that are legit. You know, they used to do that in opera, cut off their monongalulus, need I say more? <laughs> castrati, get the picture. And they, this used to, used to take the boys with the best voices in the chorus. This was a reward yet. What are you kidding? <laughs> I would have thrown that audition in a second, you know. Oh, glory. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, not him, signore. You better believe it, signore. My wife is in the opera, you know, and uh, very exciting last year. American singer, there she was in France, there, you know, it was exciting. Full house at the Paris Opera. Of course, it was helmet night. <laughs> Which helped attendance considerably. I mean, it was, you know, it was tremendous. 
gave away these little Valkyrie helmets to the old Frenchmen. They really did it. Yeah! You know, they lit up like in the circus. The kids waved those. You know. the, uh, I got a little importantly. You know, part of it is habit. I mean, uh, my, my folks were born in New York, but were a Hungarian lineage. But uh, Hungarian, you know, they, uh, meat, meat, meat was a diet, you know. And, uh, meat, potatoes, paprika, meat. Meat, meat, you know. The doctor told us uncanny. My father had the diet of an average puma. <laughs> Um, they say, well, eat lots of uh, fiber, you know, eat a rope. I mean, what is it? <laughs> Never get cancer. If you just go to the docks here, take a rope from the Queen Elizabeth, was that in your mouth? Yeah, that's just fiber for uh, eight years. But the contrast, my wife is in such great shape. We were interviewed on CBS News a few years ago, and she told Diane Sawyer, yes, I treat my body like a temple, you know. <laughs> I get high on life, you know, goody two-shoes. Anyway, no, I mean, it's... True, I treat my body like a pool hall. <laughs> you have to choose a building, but it is my body. And uh, she read that book, Eat to Win, that Martina read and all that, you know. I read the companion book, Eat to Come in 54th. <laughs> she has a large picture in the cover of the new haagen vanilla ice cream on a stick dipped in Belgian chocolate. You familiar with this? You ever want to go into the movie like the Louis Pasteur story? I, we saw it with Paul Muni the other night, and people were so ignorant in medicine. Then, Monsieur Pasteur, your theory about washing your hands before surgical operations is ridiculous. Is the patient ready yet? <laughs> Nonsense, Monsieur. I've delivered many babies. Never. Had <laughs> Because now, today, the lawyers are allowed to advertise. It's endless. It used to be taboo, and now it's, hello, are you injured? <laughs> Do you know someone who's injured? <laughs> Search yourself carefully. You sure you're not injured? <laughs> you want to be injured? <laughs> you know someone who wants to be injured? Do you know someone who wants to know someone who may be injured? Do you know someone who died a death? Did they die a wrongful death or a rightful death? It's a rightful, you know. Remember, we collect nothing unless you do. This is where the most litigious bastards in the face of the earth, you know, in a barroom argument. He never batted 249. I'll kick your ass. I'll sue you. I mean, that's it. You know. <laughs> Thus, you know, everyone sues everyone else, you know. Jacoby and Myers are pretty legit, though. But uh, the interesting thing, here we are. They've been in operation 11, 12 years, whatever. They're in the Sears stores in a lot of states. You go to your lawyer, Mom, you see about the lawnmower, I'll see about the murder conviction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll meet you in plumbing tools. Then we'll compare rates with the good hands people who I was with for 20 years. Never had an accident. Didn't have a ticket since my junior year in college. My car was stolen twice. I used to keep an apartment in L.A. They dropped me, the good hands people. You know, good hands people gave me the middle finger of one of the good hands. <laughs> You know, I realized something. My mom, my mom is in a visit from Florida. I remember we always had a, a plastic cover on our rug. For 20 years on the carpet, there was a plastic cover. I went to a friend's house. They had a normal rug. I thought they were poor people, and it wore through to the fuzz. <laughs> I did this um, project for HBO, Paddington the Bear. I did all 24 voices. The animation's a little weak, you know. This, the bear's mouth moves about every five minutes. It's not exactly, you know, <laughs> sophisticated Disney. It's not eye-catching. You know. Occasionally you see a little finger opening the mouth, too, which is a mistake. You know. I don't like those uh, bad, cheap horror movies. You see this giant cockroach, and for a second you see a finger coaxing him out on camera. <laughs> I like authenticity, you know what I mean? I don't like bad accents in the movies. You're watching a Knights in Shining Armor and Tony Curtis comes off his horse. My liege, a Malinus, a singer of songs. Uh, I had a friend 
I don't like the bad accents in movies. I have a friend who was in, the, uh, in, a, in a miniseries, and he played a German immigrant. And he kept on forgetting his accent. He's a good actor. I won't mention his name. And it's every fifth word he remembers is supposed to be German. He says, what's going on here, a party or what? You know. <laughs> Yeah, you guys think you're very smart. I mean, come on, please. Get it together. I'm at the stage now where I actually have some old films. Some of mine show at channel 56, you know, at uh, 400 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and um, actually, one of them I did was called Rivals, and they wanted... Uh, jo Joan Hackett was my co-star, and they wanted her to work nude in this love scene we had together, and she refused. You know, she thought it was gratuitous, and, um, you know, I'm too hip to even discuss such things. You know, I mean, it's a human body, my God, it's, uh, you have a body, I have a body, we all have a body, it's just a human body. Until I realized it would be my ass 28 feet tall in a drive-in movie. <laughs> we talk about 28 feet tall, where a hair becomes a pine tree. This is uh, not a talk show, I want you to remind you. Isn't this nice? We're really here. They've been great to me. Johnny, especially, has always been a great, you know, but it's so quick. Hi, ah, Johnny, the new album came out and the new home video, boom, move over one chair. You know, it's uh, <laughs> boom, move over one chair. <laughs> boom, move over one chair. I fell off the edge once when they had the Pointer Sisters and the Hudson Brothers in the same show. <laughs> Completely ran out of chairs. And I've been out with so many interesting people, talking about weight loss. I'd never met her, and then twice I was on shows within three weeks. Nell Carter, very large woman, talking about how she lost weight. She said she was very religious. And, uh, you know, found the Lord and lost weight. And about three or four weeks later, she gained back about 60 pounds. And, you know, and evidently couldn't find the Lord for a while. And I can assure you, the Lord had no trouble finding her. That's <laughs> showed up on satellite photos. <laughs> I mean, I, I was on once with Tony Randall, and at that time I smoked cigarettes, and I, after my bid, you know, I was like, oh, man, I lit up a cigarette. Johnny smokes during the commercial breaks, his Paul Malls, and they come back, and you see smoke coming out of his nose, and he figures that people think he's a volcano, and that's it. You know. <laughs> but, uh, I was smoking a cigarette, and Tony Randall comes on and says, Don't smoke, please, put the cigarette out. And was like, Sorry. <laughs> Tony is very staccato. He's, don't, don't, don't. You know, he, he's not legato. He's a. Put the, you know. And I, all right, but he wouldn't leave well enough alone. He's a nice guy, he's a cultured man. And he said, Lips that touch tobacco will never touch mine. I said, Don't worry about it, don't. <laughs> no chance I'm going to soul kiss you in the next 25 minutes. I think. <laughs> one song with Shari Lewis. She's a magnificent ventriloquist, but she was so mean to me. You know the one with the little lamb chop and the puppet? I mean, I, would you think a person like that could be mean? Here I was a young guy on The Tonight Show. I did a great joke, something. It had nothing to do with her. Johnny laughed, the audience laughed. She went, that's not funny, you're supposed to be a comedian. <laughs> Her puppet lamb chop is a sweat sock with buttons. <laughs> that fixed her. I mean, it's an interesting idea, but it's nice that it's not a Muppet. I mean, she used to work evidently in a cleaning store and she was donning socks one day. Hello, how are you? And she got into it. Oh, they loved her at the cleaning store. Olaf, the pants presser, he especially loved her. Yeah. Oh, shawty, you make our life so beautiful here. Shh. You know, oh, making the socks talk, you make my pants talk now, you know. That was the last thing that they had in this theater, by the way, in December, it closed, the Swedish State Opera. They did Showboat. It was an attempt, you know. <laughs> they tried, but... It mean we be there was something missing. I couldn't lay my finger. 
I got a, comp a letter the other day from Lee Iacocca about something and fun and people talking about him for president. I felt it personally to me. It was a computer mm -hmm. to Robert R R A R B U R T Klein K L Y N E. <laughs> Wrong name, you know. Computers don't have intuition. They're hilarious. I got a new Apple computer, and it shows you I'm not still too immature to do this. You put the beginner program in, it says, put in your first name. I went, shithead. <laughs> and it goes, hi, shithead, glad to meet you. <laughs> now, first thing is, they're going to say, you know, answer, which of these is correct? Right, shithead. You're on your way to being a computer genius. We laughed 10 times at this nonsense. Now, shithead, let's see, you know. Now, shit had a lot of people have trouble <laughs> with this next question, but I'm sure you'll get it. Spectacular shit! You know, it gets all excited. And it's, it's stupid machine doesn't know it's calling me shithead. My name is Robert Klein, not shithead. It's quite a joke, right? It's in the level of teasing a dog, you know. I got food for you. No, I don't. You know, I mean, it's... <laughs> they do have, of course, the cheekiest commercial. I tell you, Lee Iacocca could be a good president. He certainly has the nerve. They have a commercial. 99 out of 100 people tested prefer the Dodge 600 ES to the Mercedes-Benz. I'd like to meet these people. <laughs> I'd like to give them a Rorschach test in a locked room with a Pinkerton guard with a tranquilizer gun. I mean, how do they get these results? I mean, it's a cute car for 82.50, but a Benz? Well, they must use North Korean police methods with electric prods. Which would you prefer? Well, frankly, the Mercedes. A Dodge! A Dodge! I like the Dodge! I love the Dodge! I don't know where my kids go to school! I mean, they can live in The Big Hand to a musical organization that has just celebrated its 75th anniversary playing together. Robert Klein Orchestra and Chorus. Let's hear it for them. We have a wonderful musical finale, and I just had to sing this song, so many requests. I think it's part of me, I'm part of it. I certainly have always loved singing over the years, and no Robert Klein show would be complete without it, especially here in the Great White Way. Stop my leg on Broadway. 
nothing can make it stop Through all my fears, it hasn't stopped in years And it's taken me to the top Not stopping my leg has been good to me And his family My leg's been unstable on network and cable It's my ID at the office psychiatry will do Play, that's okay. We'll see it anyway. But when you can't stop your leg in an automobile, no big deal. Try it to the steering wheel. If you can stop your leg, no any place, no disgrace. But on Broadway, especially on Broadway. I gotta get my legs started again. Will you all help me out there? If you believe in the theater, if you believe in goodness and truth, make that leg go. Will you make that leg go? If you believe in making a living, 